This man that I'm about to introduce has been involved in soccer his entire life. And he's from Miami, and I'd like you to welcome back home, Tom Mulroy. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate it. First of all, I want to thank uh, the Rockland County Sports Commission. I want to thank them, the Hall of Famer, for uh, inducting me. I certainly want to thank my family and my friends who are here tonight, and I wouldn't be here without them. I just want to start there, but when I originally got the call, and uh, Dan, it was actually Dan that called me and said that uh, I had been inducted in the Hall of Fame, I was certainly surprised. I was excited. I was humble. I don't get humbled easy, okay? <laughs> and I said, wow, this is really nice. And I started thinking about my road, you know, because all of a sudden you wake up one day and the young guy that those legs used to fly, they ain't there anymore, and you're an old guy, and you're working with young guys and young girls, and, and uh, you just kind of look back at things and what went on and what your road was in life. And when I started thinking about it, when I first saw a soccer ball, I was 11, I kicked my first ball in a game when I was 12, on my 12th birthday. September 28th, 1968. And it was, I was playing with the Spring Valley Boys team. It was the first soccer team for kids north of New York City. When I used to juggle the ball up at Cinema 45, there's a movie theater that used to be there. We played there, we played there end endlessly. We played there night and day. That was a street ball. In our neighborhood, that's where soccer kind of started. And when I used to run up the street dribbling the ball with the dots on it, people didn't know what it was. They literally didn't know what the soccer ball was. And then, then it got bigger and it got bigger, and I got a little better here and there. But as I thought on the road, what were the important things? Because every athlete, whether we're a track, whether you're with football, basketball, it doesn't matter. In some ways, we're, we're, all, we're all brothers and sisters. It's all kind of the same thing. A lot of the same motivations motivate us. A lot of the same psychologies. A lot of the same physical things. So in some ways, we're playing with a different ball, but it's kind of the same game. So when I look back, and I say, what were the important things? Certainly it was my teammates. We became family almost. Uh, whether it was my high school team or my club team, my college team. Later on I, I went into the pros, much different, but super important. But as I look back, I said, what, what is it? Was it all the practice? Was it the environment? Was it the challenge? Nobody else played soccer. Literally, I once held the world's record for juggling the soccer ball and keeping it up in the air 12,295 times. Top of the but my point, my point is, the reason why I was so good at it is because nobody else played soccer, so I had to do that by myself at the time. If I wanted to train, I trained by myself. So, I keep looking back and I'm going, so what is it that is probably the single most important thing for me? And the more I thought about it, the more it was my role models, my coaches. And again, that's another connection between soccer and track, or soccer and baseball, whichever sport you want to pick how important that coach's role is. I actually do a lot of public speaking now and seminars and clinics for youth soccer coaches that are coaching. And often I say to them in the meeting, I go, you think you're a coach? Oh, what the heck, I'm just a coach. I get the kids Tuesdays and Thursdays. I got my 15 kids and I'm training them over here. But you know what? Last year you had a little Billy on your team. The little Billy was full of energy, he was funny, he was like, and this year, 
I'm screaming at him because you know what? He just doesn't cover the field the way you did. He's getting worse than he was last year. Then you find out his parents are getting divorced. Now his mom and his dad don't live in the same house. And you got the kid on Tuesday and you got him on Thursday. Soccer ain't that important. How you handle that kid on Tuesday and Thursday. That's important. That's coaching. And I was super lucky. Started out. Actually, when I got into the pros, there's always this debate, you might say. A debate over, it's not my responsibility. Their parents are their role model. Not in my world. My coaches were my role models. Anybody that says that as an athlete or as a leader, a coach, you're not a role model, you haven't been down that road. I'm 60 years old. When I sign something now, my T is a straight line like that and a circle on the top. Kind of the top is like that. Anybody ever saw Paley's signature? Just like that. <laughs> I'm 60 years old and I still sign checks the way I learned to write my name because of somebody that wasn't having an effect on me. When I was 15, I was playing at the high school, and there weren't a lot of soccer camps around. I knew our kids play. I had to leave Rockland and find someone else to play. I went to the New York Cosmo soccer camp at Hofstra University. I'll never forget. I was the most valuable player. So I got invited into the Cosmo locker room. They're playing at Hofstra. This is before Pele came in there with big time. I got invited into the locker room because they were going to give me a trophy at halftime. So I get in the locker room. I'm all excited. I mean, I'm in the locker room with the pro players. Are you kidding me? I'm 15 years old. I'm like, wow. And I get in there, and I'm like this. I'm like in shock. Because I had big blooming underwear. You know the big underwear like that hangs down? <laughs> and all of these European guys, they don't wear jock straps. They wore like bikini underwear. <laughs> He wore bikini underwear. Now, if you, if you just, I'm just gonna let you guess what kind of underwear I got on right now. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. The fact of the matter is, when I used to argue with my teammates, or whenever I hear that debate come up, it's just not something I can hear. Because coaches are the foundation. In my case, I grew up on Pascack Road. A lot of people know Pascack. It's kind of a main road. Right at the bottom of the hill, right? And I only had a mom. And my uncle, who's here with me tonight, was like my dad, um, but I, I actually didn't, didn't have a dad. So in many ways, my coaches filled in to be my dad. They were my father figure. And I'm gonna tell you right now, and my wife said, don't say that. <laughs> don't say it. People won't understand. Now I am lucky. And I'm going to talk a little bit about them in a minute, but I would be, I really, I hate to say this, but I truly believe I would be dead or in jail if I didn't have my sport and my coaches. So, I want to dedicate my trophy to these coaches that 
had that impact on me. So when I get mine home, I'm going to put, there's six of them that were pretty much my main youth coaches. Two here, two here, and two over here. Some of them are here tonight, some of them are in heaven. But uh, it started out with the first team I ever played. A kid by the name of Paulie Bianco lived across the street from me, an Italian kid. His dad owned the Spring Valley Bar and Restaurant on Main Street 45. And his dad thought it was good business. He put a shower in the downstairs of the bar. So all these Norwegian and German guys would come and practice at Spring Valley Junior High, and they'd take a shower at his place and drink like crazy after. <laughs> and Sundays, the German Hungarians would come from the Metropolitan Oval and Mass Pit Queens, and they'd come in, they'd play them, and after both teams would go back to his place and party and shower. So they said, the league said, if you're gonna have, if you don't have a youth team, to help grow the sport, we're gonna charge you more to play in the league. So they didn't have enough kids, so they were recruiting kids. So he said, hey, these guys, these nice guys, they, they wanna suck, you wanna play soccer? So I went and I started to play. And there was a coach, actually his son's here tonight. I don't believe that the dad is here, I think he's out of town. But uh, his name was Hansi Sauter. And that was where right. Johnny Sauter was back there and now it's back. And uh, his kids were on my team. I was much older than them. The team was 12 and under. So we had seven-year-olds on the team all the way up to 12. We didn't have enough kids in one age to play soccer. Hard to believe when you look around Rockland County today. And Hans Sauter introduced me to soccer. And also, my ability to start to understand accents began. <laughs> well, they're going to go and play a little bit here. Come in here and figure out you get off the game. So he kind of started me off on Sautner and kind of gave me the passion. I had that foreign passion because all the kids, they came from all over Rockland County to make up one team of 16 kids. Then the next team, I was at the junior high at the time, and you remember because you all, everybody played soccer in gym back then, you had a brown ball with stitches on it, everybody hated it, it was like, oh, soccer, crap, we gotta play soccer. And they put two cones up and kids kicked the hell out of each other, you kicked the shins, you knocked each other, no one knew how to play. And all of a sudden, I could play with them German kids. So I'm like, <laughs> And Richard Bizarres goes, where did that kid come from? <laughs> Freddie Bloom, who happens to be here tonight, and Richard Bizarres, my junior high and high school coach. Not only, not only two names, so that's three names. We got Hansi over here. I got to put Batman and Robin together on one side over here. Okay? But they saw me playing there, and they, they used to, um, well, actually, Coach Mazaris, because I was in the eighth grade, always liked to bring me up to the ninth grade team. And then Fred said, you can have him, but he has to play in the eighth grade games. <laughs> and then the next one up was Coach Dunamaker. Oh, yeah. Gary Dunamaker, my high school coach. He tried to get me from the junior high up to the high school. And he was brilliant. He was great. He was the AV, and he was also our um, driver's ed teacher. And at that time, when I was in high school, this film came out with Paley on how to play soccer. He let me, you can't fire him now, it's too late. He let me take home the whole video. You know you used to have, it's not like now it's on your phone, right? It ain't like that. He let me take home the whole machine, and I watched that video every night for like six months. Okay? So Coach Scudamaker was another guy that, that uh, is going up on my uh, list there. And then I had two... One, club, one more club coach, his son happens to be here too. He passed away last year. He basically had me from the time I was 13 right, right through to he passed last year. He was like my father, Coach Rittenbacher. Not only my father, but this guy was a one-man soccer program. 
We used to go, all the teams we played against were in the city, so we'd get in the back of his van, he was a painter, we'd cover ourselves going through the, the uh, toll booths, and he'd drive us to every game in the back of the guy's van. Frank Wurtenbach. Okay, and he's gonna go up there. His son Frankie's here too. Don't stand up, he'll knock the ceiling off. He's the tallest kid in the building. And last but not least, after uh, I left to go to college, there was a guy by the name of George Visveri, a Hungarian guy, put the final touches on it. And I just wanna thank, I just wanna say, because no matter what sport you're in, you had a coach. And to me, the one thing that I wanna be able to do that they did, was just pass it on. So thank you very much, everybody. God bless and pass it on.